All right. Call to order the November 16th meeting of the Beverages Licensing Authority in the city of Boulder. Thank you, uh, Member Absalom. Uh, <clears throat> we will be moving on to uh, the instructions for virtual hearing and rules of decorum. Uh, uh, thank you, um, Caitlin. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit, there we go, okay. The city has engaged with community members to co-create a vision for productive, meaningful, and inclusive civic conversation. This vision supports physical and emotional safety for community members, staff, and board commission members, as well as democracy for people of all ages, identities, lived experiences, and political perspectives. More about this vision and the project's community engagement process can be found at bouldercolorado.gov slash services slash productive dash atmospheres. The following are examples of rules of decorum found in the Boulder Revised Code and other guidelines that support this vision. There will, these will be upheld during the meeting. All remarks and testimony shall be limited to matters related to city business. No participant shall make threats or use other forms of intimidation against any person. Obscenity, racial epithets, and other speech and behaviors that disrupts or otherwise impedes the ability to con conduct the meetings are prohibited. Participants are required to sign up to speak using the name that they are commonly known by, and individuals must display their whole name before being allowed to speak online. Currently, only audio testimony is permitted online. However, with the Beverage Licensing Authority, we do require video when at all possible. Thank you, Caitlin. Moving on to roll call. Member Absalom? Member Absalom present. Member Carr. Member Carr present. Member Califano. Member Califano present. Member Roberts. Member Roberts present. Member Wallace. Member Wallace present. We have a full quorum of all five members present. Continuing on, we do have the election of the chair and the vice chair. What we'll begin with is nominations for the chair and voting. Do I hear any nominations for chair? Before we move forward, could I share something with the authority? Oh, I apologize. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I meant to try to get some time in here before, but I just wanted to let um, everyone know that I have formally put in my notice with the Mountain Sun Pubs and Breweries. Um, so I will be leaving um, the company here in the springtime my wife and I potentially could have some things that would change my residency um, here in the city of Boulder. That's not set in stone yet. I don't know if that would have any bearing on nominations or voting here today, but I wanted to be transparent with this group to let you know that I will be in the city of Boulder um, for a, definitely a certain period of time, but I'm going to be no longer working um, in a licensed establishment um, beginning in March. So I wanted to get that out there before we move forward with any nominations. Okay. Well, does it, does anyone want to do it? I was going to offer to do it again. Um, I think I've got it pretty down at this point. So um, I know that it's uh, kind of one of those weighted situations and roles. So um, I'm willing to take it on if that's fine. I nominate Matthew. I, I second that nomination. We have a nomination from Member Wallace and a second from Member Absalom. Oh, that, that member was Carr. Member Carr, I believe. I'm sorry, I apologize, Member Carr. So as Acting Vice Chair, do I say all in favor? All in favor say aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Carr, aye. The vote is unanimous. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Califano. Continue. Congratulations, on. Matt. <laughs> Can, moving on to Vice Chair. Do we have any nominations? I nominate Mike. 
Thanks. Um, I, I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm pretty new to the board, um, so I wasn't going to step up for it, but uh, I'm open to it if it, yeah, I'm open to it. I'll second nomination for Mike Carr. All in favor say aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Roberts, aye. Member Carr, aye. The vote is unanimous. We have a new chair and a new vice chair. Don't worry, Mike. I try not to miss these that much, so. Thanks. I'll learn a lot, I'm sure. Continuing on will be the approval of the Beverage Licensing Authority minutes from October 19th, 2022. I move to accept as printed and sent. Walls. Member Carr will second that. Okay, all in favor say aye. Member Califano will abstain. Member Absalom will also abstain. Member Wallace says aye. Member Robert says aye. Member Carr says aye. The motion passes uh, three votes with two abstaining. <laughs> And moving on to hearing agenda issues from the licensing clerk. I would like to notify that in the neighborhood boundary setting for today, SB Wines LLC doing business as Persona Wine at 2299 Pearl Street, number six, Boulder, Colorado 80302 was incorrectly named as a new beer and wine type license rather than a retail liquor store license. So that's what we'll be hearing uh, for um, boundaries today. Additionally, we would like to let you know that per new uh, city communication guidelines, um, all beverage licensing authority um, virtual meetings will now be posted via video link to the beverage licensing authority webpage. And licensing manager Shane Garris, I believe you have some information regarding show cause procedures. Yes, thanks Kristen. Um, so I just want to take a minute to discuss our procedures for order to show cause hearings, since we do have one on the agenda for later today. So historically, the board would issue a license suspension that begins on the Monday after the BLA hearing, and staff would like to request that we consider adjusting this timeline until Tuesday. And the reason for this request is there are some steps that staff need to take before our suspension begins, including um, collecting signatures from both parties, uh, writing the poster, and providing the licensee with some time to come to our office, pick up the poster, and actually get it posted at their licensed premises. And we found that um, when we have a suspension starting on Monday, it's a, it's a big time crunch and um, just creates some difficulties for us in the licensee. So we just wanted to put that out there and um, mention that and um, if the board would consider moving that to Tuesday, that would be a huge help for staff. So thank you for considering that. I think we went to Monday because uh, uh, we, we always acquiesced to whatever was best for, for, for the staff because uh, they're the ones that are responsible for doing it. And I, I think and I can speak and, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but the uh, it was always just based on whatever was convenient for you. We'd switch it from Friday to Monday because of that. And if more convenient for you to do on Tuesday, then I, I'm in favor of that. If it requires a motion, I would like to make that motion. Thank you. I appreciate that. And historically, Mondays did work fine, especially when we were meeting in person, because it was really easy to collect those signatures and create the poster. Um, but since we're doing things virtually, we just it takes a little more time. So that's kind of the reason for our change in request. Laurel, does that need a motion? I feel like it doesn't. Yeah, it's just because it's something that we do internally. One is something. you decide on each show cause, then you can decide that that uh, starts on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. But I do appreciate you asking about that. Great. Yeah. Continuing uh, in our agenda today, agenda item number two matters from the Boulder Police Department. 
Good afternoon. Um, the only updates I have um, <clears throat> our last planned outing for uh, compliance checks, which was um, week before last, we had to cancel due to illness of our um, operative. Um, so we'll be planning another one here in the near future. Um, last week, I conducted a fake ID training class for liquor establishment employees um, on behalf of uh, the RAR. Um, and we had about 14 attendees um, held at the uh, Bohemian Beer Garden. So that went, uh, I thought, pretty well. <clears throat> And just to confirm that you have my report on the activity summary for Bluff Street Bar and Billiards. It was in the packet. Okay. That is correct. Um, I don't know if they're going to be in attendance today. I wasn't sure what the, uh, if they were required or not, um, but we can discuss that when we get to it. That's all I have. Great, thank you, Officer Denig. Is there any questions, Steve? It's not a question, it's a story. You asked us once before if it was, uh, are you, I brought to your attention that letting people know about the uh, uh, the fact that you're gonna start the, the, the uh, compliance checks again. And, and after I said that, I, it occurred to me that to tell you the story of the, the late 90s, we would actually send a letter out telling them all we were about to come to their place and, 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 and check the, the compliance. And in doing so, we had an 80% failure rate. So <laughs> it didn't do any good to tell anybody. That's all I had to say. Great, thank you. Does anyone on the board have any other questions for Officer Denig? Not seeing any. All right, well, thank you very much, Officer Denig. Continuing on agenda item number three, matters from the Responsible Association of Retailers. Good afternoon. Um, joining here from space. I'm out on the road. So I uh, hope you guys are all doing well. Sorry I missed last month. I was out for my birthday. So um, no offense. I had to take a day off <laughs> and I could not make it online. Uh, we had some really good things happen in the past couple months. Um, the ID compliance checks are back up and running. I have a really good person doing them. Um, good news and bad news with that one. Good news is they're up and running. Bad news is I've had the worst grade I've ever had since I've been in Boulder, which means we got about eight red cards in Boulder, which is the highest amount I've ever gotten. Um, that's about 10% of the membership right there, which is concerning. Um, so I think that's great we're back out there because Officer Denig is back out there and people are on their toes and hopefully this will help them realize, hey, we're not the only ones back out there, but Officer Tannick is back out there. So let's get back on it. Let's make sure the proper training is happening because I know I'm seeing all these people. I know they're getting the proper ID training. Um, it's something I'm addressing with ownership and management uh, currently because uh, generally Boulder's the best uh, when it comes to, to red cards. But with that being said, um, Fort Collins and Greeley also had their worst failure rates as well. Uh, so it just shows me there's some kind of trend going on um, I know places are still understaffed and such uh, member meetings have been at a lower percentage because of that, like attendance and such. So we're looking for ways to bolster that. Um, I do want to thank Officer Denig for doing that um, ID compliance, uh, not ID compliance, sorry, the ID, fake ID um, seminar last week. I was out with probably the worst stomach flu I've had in 10 years. So thank you again, Rich, for doing that. I really appreciate that. I had awesome feedback. Um, again, 14 isn't the number we had last time. I think we were closer to 50 last time in April. Um, but again, I'm just seeing this due to some sort of shortages of staff. It's in every community. It's not just Boulder. Fort Collins was lower. Greeley was lower in attendance as well. Um, so I think it's just one of those things. But we'll be doing it again in March and April, just like this, this year. And I think um, hopefully by then things hopefully will be figured out and we'll get a bunch of people in there. Um, ID checks will be almost monthly now. I'll definitely be doing another one before Christmas. Um, I know I was going to send you that information on the patron safety training. The only reason why I did not do that uh, was because we're kind of going to reformat that. Um, I had a few people who could not make the dates that I proposed as well, and they're super interested in being a part of this. So what's either going to happen is I'm going to do it the week of the 13th 
in December or exactly about a month later in January. And I will offer two patron safety trainings in 2023 to make up for the missed one in 2022. Um, I would rather put something concrete together with the right players in your community than just put something on to put something on. Um, so as I get that all developed, I will be sending that packet into you all. It'll only be like a one or two pager explaining exactly what it is, what the benefit is, and asking for your approval as a mitigating benefit if you know someone doesn't do something too negligent. Um, other than that, my trainings are packed. Boulder just, I mean, I literally almost freaked out last month because I had like 10 extra people show up at the last minute. I was at capacity. That's wonderful. That just shows me people are being hired and that everybody is very concerned in meeting that 60 day goal. Um, so things are really looking good at the end of this year. Uh, I know the SEA grantors are really happy with us and the work we've done. And I think these ID compliance checks are really gonna, you know, kick some butt and light some fires under some people to make sure their employees are doing the right thing. Um, other than that, as usual, if y'all have questions for me, please let me know. Great, thank you, Nathan. Um, I do think that, and this is just my own personal insight uh, into why there might have been so many failures was during COVID when we weren't doing stings or anything like that. Well, compliance checks, excuse me. Um, I think people really dropped their guard. And I think these yeah. restaurants now have um, really kind of taken a, a passive approach to checking IDs, ensuring that, you know, things that are against their license or the law are happening in their establishments. I know I've seen it plenty of times, um, yeah. especially living on the Hill, um, the amount of open containers I see going around just in the middle of the streets is, uh, sure. yeah, it's, it's definitely a wild. A lot. Yeah. They, they had somebody in Fort Collins from the Rio have like a jug of margaritas just going through old town. It was crazy, dude. So it's happening. And, and I agree with you on that one as well. I think people, I mean, there's members. I'm not going to mention them, of course, but there's members in Boulder who I'm like, holy crud, you're like one of my tightest members. How did that happen? So that's the kind of like, um, you know, we just have to have a talk about it. And I think everything in 2023 will be rock and roll, but I'm really pressing them. I'm sending out extra emails to Boulder community people just so you know, to be like, hey, keep your people vigilant, keep them carding because it is the holiday season and people like to get a little wild. Great, thank you. Any other questions from the board, uh, Member Wallace? Uh, Mr. Dewey, when you do your compliance checks, how does that go? Uh, yeah. When you, when you said fa failure, does it mean they failed to ask or they asked, they looked at it, they didn't, they still went ahead or what does it look like? Yeah, sure. So um, when I say failure, I mean, they did not ask for an ID at all and alcohol was served. So the the case being is obviously we want to be carding people everybody um the state recommends 50 and younger for for liquor stores i don't know why just liquor stores so as an rar member you're committed to carding everybody who looks 50 and younger i send people in between the ages of 21 and 30 because you definitely better be carding someone who's 30 to 21. um even tips says that even the tips manual so um, I don't try to trick anybody. I don't do anything. I just send in a person who's 21 to 30 with their ID there to go and get properly ID'd. And if they're properly ID'd, we hand them a card that just says they've been checked. They don't know if they got a green check or red check or a yellow check, which I'll explain in a sec. Um, so green check means they ID'd properly. Boom, ID's good. No alcohol was served. Or maybe alcohol was served at the very last moment, but before control was not lost the person asked for ID, which never really happens. Um, so the yellow card I really added for the dispensaries, but also for some of the, the liquor places for identification as far as um, pulling out of the wallet. If you don't pull it out of the wallet, you're not gonna be able to tell if it's fake or not. I'm sorry, you just won't unless it's a terrible fake. You have to feel that ID. You have to really visualize it. And the other thing I noticed with IDing processes from video and just me sitting in restaurants and, and my members establishments is the verification where they'll hold up the card and then they'll put it down. So the facial recognition, it was way too low. They were doing it in like one or two seconds. That's impossible. You're not checking birth date, expiration date and facial structure within two seconds. I mean, Officer Denig will tell you that. So that's just, again, one of those things where um, if my people feel they're not adequately checking and or do not grab that id physically they'll get a yellow check which almost should be a red but we just count it as yellow for now and that's like a warning but the absolute red check means alcohol was served 
and control was lost of the alcohol to that patron. So literally my person will have a beer in front of them and be like, hey, you've been RARID checked. Um, tell your management, please. And then they'll leave. They don't consume the alcohol. Um, and then they go on to their next check. So I hope that clears it up. It, it does. You said uh, 50 and under. Does that mean I would get checked? Yes, sir. I would, I would check your ID. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Great. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Not seeing any. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Dewey. Thank you all. Good to see you. Continuing on agenda item number four, general public comments for future beverage licensing authority hearings. This is the time for public comment. If you are here for public comment, please use the raise hand function in the um, chat feature. If you are here and you're using your phone, please use star nine to raise your hand. Do we have anyone for public comment? Chair, I am not seeing any hands raised at this time. Would you like me to call one more time? I think we're good. There's not that many people here. So um, I think we can move on to the next item. Thank you. Agenda item number five, report and update from Boulder's Tavern LLC doing business as Bluff Street Bar and Billiards, 2690 28th Street, Unit E, Boulder, Colorado, 80301. Richard Wyman, managing member, Robert Ware, and Jose Emanuele, members, with a premises business mailing address as required for conditions set at the June 16, 2022 Beverage Licensing Authority hearing for the renewal of a tavern type liquor license. I will make one note for the authority. This was um, conditions or set at the June. Um, beverage licensing authority hearing. Uh, we're aware that this is November. However, some for some reason this had inadvertently ended up on our November agenda uh, rather than the December agenda. So uh, we do make apologies for that. But it was not uh, discovered until for the six months until after uh, the agenda had already been published. Great. Um, Kristen, do we need to get them sworn in? We do. Need to get one in. And so I'm seeing that we have um, attorney David Wunderlich. That's right. Would you like to record your appearance, please? Of course. My name is David Wunderlich. I'm here on behalf of Boulder Barn LLC, which is DBA Bluff Street Bar and Billiards, the licensee. And appearing with me here is uh, managing member Richard Wyman. Can you give your um, like, uh, attorney registration number? Of course, 39365. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Wyman, would you raise your right hand and repeat after me, please? I, state your name. I, Richard Wyman. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That the testimony and comments provided to the Beverage Licensing Authority that the uh, comments made to the, the, I missed a word. That's okay. <laughs> the testimony <laughs> to the beverage authority uh, are- Today uh, are true and uh, correct. Today are true and correct. Thank you very much. You bet. All right, great. So we have a report in our packet that uh, was put together by Officer Denig here. Um, had a few calls for service um, reports put in it. Some had reports filed while others did not. Um, do you have a copy of that report? Yeah, we do. yes, I do, we do. All right, can you give a little background specifically on the ones that had reports filed? So it would be the first top ones. Certainly. These three. So shall I ask Mr. Wyman questions for the board or would you like him to talk more free form? I think um, we can just have him kind of give us background on 
what these incidents were, what or what became of them, how they occurred, what they're doing to prevent these kinds of incidents from happening in the future. And then we'll open the uh, to questions from the board. Okay. Um, we're going to be looking on my screen here. I think Zoom will still pick up. So the first one here is August 1st, 2022. Uh, so you want me to speak to these uh, reports? Yeah. Yes, exactly. please. All right. Uh, on August 1st, there was an incident with a, a person that I know um, that is being handled with representation through the system. Um, there was no assault. And that will, I am fairly, I'm confident, will be borne out through uh, the system. Uh, I have a, a uh, next appearance in January, January 31st. Uh, I'm assuming and have reason to believe the charges will be dropped by that time, but we shall see. Uh, the next one is this. September 14th assault call. I don't know what that assault call was on this on September 14th. Uh, two males fighting in the bar. I have no knowledge of that. And on the 24th, there was no assault and no crime. So to follow up on the board's questions, do you have um, <clears throat> any response to the question about how the bar is addressing these types of incidents to prevent them from happening in the future, um, you know, via staff or your policies? Uh, again, uh, on August 1st, that was a false claim. So there isn't procedure in place to prevent false claim. Um, I have not witnessed or been aware of assaults in the bar, and certainly we have security and, uh, we deal with circumstances that arise immediately and, uh, We uh, diffuse situations and people on their way. I'm going to open it up to the board now for questions. Um, however, I do find it, and I'll just make this statement, a little concerning that there's a report filed about an assault that happened in your establishment that you have no knowledge of. So as, in, as the owner, you should have been notified by the police, which I believe Officer Denny can speak to more. Um, but yeah, do, are there any questions from the board? I actually had the same question um, about that and the, the process and, and and more broadly, if, if you're not aware, sir, then um, is there someone else, a manager or someone else who is made aware and, and is handling that? I'm, I'm remembering there was an incident that was written down, but I don't remember the particulars of it. Steve, you had a question? Well, um, you're suggesting that the uh, charge for assault which sounds like is a charge that you're going to have to respond to. Is that correct? I'm sorry, say again? The, on uh, August 1st, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a charge of assault um, and you're a domestic assault. And you're saying you're, you're the, um, you're the uh, perpetrator? Uh, they're saying I'm the perpetrator. There was no uh, assault, but yes, you're, I'm the one you're, that... su you're suggesting it's going to be it's going to be uh, uh, done done with before it goes to court. Is and how how will that happen? Um, I am hopeful it will be. I have no idea as of now. What I do know is that I have a trial date uh, scheduled January thirty first. That's the only comment I have. Are there any other questions from the board? 
uh, member Absalom. Yeah, so um, Mr. Rogers, I'm wondering here, just to kind of go with some of uh, my colleagues here on the authority, you're saying that you have security in place. Um, is there also security camera footage of, or are there security cameras in use at your establishment? Yes, there are. But there's, so a, there, there's okay. a limit on the uh, number of days that are recorded. So there's a limited loop to how the system works? Uh, yeah, it overwrites it. So. so when this report happened on the 1st, was there mm -hmm. footage submitted to the Boulder Police Department of what was happening on site? I'm sorry? When this incident happened on the 1st, um, did you have, have that footage already been overwritten before the police were notified? No. Um, I was asked about video of the incident and I was then informed that the other party was arrested at that time. And I didn't think there was an ongoing issue. And by the time they got back to me to ask, uh, my loop is four days. So it was after that period that they got back to me to ask, and it had been overwritten by then. So again, to restate, I didn't think there was an issue. I didn't think there was anything I needed to respond to when I had heard that the other party had been arrested. And it was days, days later that uh, I was recontacted. So all the evidence or information that you had was submitted to the Boulder Police Department when that was that issue was handled, correct? All the anything you had from footage to witnesses that was all given by you? Uh, no, they didn't see video because by the time they asked me again for it, because I had um i didn't think there was an there was an issue i didn't think there was anything going on and it took um close to a week to ask me again and by then it had been overwritten i'm just wondering if there is an event in your establishment and the police are involved and the mention of recording has taken place why you wouldn't want to take extra steps to have that footage as proof that you're either innocent or to use against the perpetrator again it's i i heard and was notified by uh vine and the victim uh, uh network that i was the victim so i didn't feel i needed to defend myself in any situation but wouldn't you have that as proof that you're innocent? And honestly, for this particular case, maybe it's not important. I think I'm looking at the overarching um, security at your place. Why are you not keeping up on your security footage? So when you're questioned, it's just you have the proof right there. And then maybe some of these other disturbances wouldn't... Um, there, there have been uh, several situations uh, that I have uh, interacted with the police, showed them video of situations that were happening, showed them uh, screenshots of situations that were happening. So I don't feel it's accurate to say I'm not accessing the resources that we have. Okay. So just to be sure, you, you saved the video when it was something you wanted to show the police. No, that's not fair to say I saved it in certain circumstances and not others. There, okay, because uh, the, 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 the um, I, I'm not really understanding that you have a video system that erases itself in such a short period of time. I mean, I, I got rings on my ring camera for, for two years ago. So I, I don't really I, understand. Um, Go Sorry. ahead. I, I, I don't understand how, 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 I mean, I mean, I've been assaulted and, and it was on video and I made sure I kept a copy of it so that the, 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 the extent of the assault was clear. I, I think 
if I might offer some testimony from Mr. Wyman, maybe I can um, ask him some questions that could address some of these board concerns. Would that be? Well, helpful? I'm asking. I'm asking him. You don't need to interpret for me. He, I'm not trying answer. to interpret for you, sir. What What are you asking me, sir? I, I don't understand why. I, I'm just puzzled as to why you, you have a video system that had proof that you had been assaulted or that you didn't assault someone or that whatever incident that it happened. It, the, the incidents happen so frequently that something like this. Doesn't doesn't come to your head? Well, I better save that. I'm not aware of how I can say beyond the days that it overwrites itself, and the incident involving myself. I didn't think there was an issue when I was told that I was the victim. She was arrested. I was notified by Vine that I was the victim, so I didn't see a need to proactively uh, defend myself. I didn't think there was an issue at all. Okay, I got it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Are there any other questions from the board? Not seeing any. Um, the one statement I would make is that you really need to tighten up your security systems, and there's some serious loopholes here. Um, and, you know, we, we don't see this number of incidents at other establishments. So, um, I would just say that should you get another show cause in the future, not saying you will, but should you, this, these kinds of items are taken into consideration. So thank you very much for your time here. And, um, yeah, we can move on to the next agenda item. Chairman Califano, I, I would like to, however, to discuss for him to, um, go over the ones that where there was no report filed. Okay. If you could, if you could explain to us, because uh, uh, clearly the the, the he, uh, uh, police services were 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 called, uh, but no 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 report was filed, and I don't know why a report wasn't filed. Because I know that sometimes you have to ask for a report to be filed in order for it to happen. Would this be more of a question for Officer Denig? Yeah, I think it would be if, if Officer Denig could step. In here, because I, I certainly want Officer Dunning to give his opinion on, on, on everything we've heard so far. And, 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 and as we go forward, if he's got a question with regards to, to this licensee, uh, I'd like to, uh, to have him ask, ask that question as well. Um, so kind of going back to the, the, the previous discussion, um, from police reports, there have been issues obtaining security footage from um, your bar. Mr. Wyman, um, if you have an establishment, a liquor establishment, and there is so much on the line, um, you cannot invest enough money in your security camera system. So if you've got issues with a um, system that's not robust enough or is old technology, um, I would encourage you to look at investing in a system because ultimately this footage could end up assisting you greatly in, in, in your liquor establishment, uh, keeping that business going. Um, you want to be able to review footage and have it be very clear. Um, still shots from videos don't really tell the, the responding officer or the investigating officer uh, the whole story. So if you've got video coverage, um, that's, that's what you need. Okay. It's there. Think of it's there to protect you. Um, and, you know, if there's a situation where, you know, your own actions could have been different then you know, that that's, that's kind of the way it is, but overall those systems are in place at, uh, liquor establishments, uh, liquor stores, um, you know, other types of uh, businesses for their, their protection and so that they can accurately recall an event. Um, and, you know, think of it in those terms that if you have to invest some money to, to get a more robust system uh, that has a, um, you know, for our, our marijuana dispensaries, they're required to keep footage for a period of uh, 40 days. So there's no such rule in place for um, uh, alcohol establishments, but think of it as, as a way that if you wanted to go back and 
maybe it's an employee theft issue or something like that, and you wanted to go back three weeks, you can't, okay? So th think of this system as a way to protect you, your business, um, ultimately your patrons, okay? To be able to assist law enforcement in those investigations. Um, so I would encourage you to, to, to take a serious look at that. Um, the report that, I guess it's the second one on September 14th. So I, you said you didn't, hadn't heard anything about that. So just a brief description of that, that was, was a little bit of convoluted call. Um, it's still open for investigation by the responding officer, primary officer. Um, apparently there was some discrepancy or some allegations over a stolen pool cue. Um, the, initially it was handled uh, non-physically and then one of the parties ended up getting in a uh, ruckus with another patron apparently or again over a pool cue that was missing and um, so it was again very convoluted uh, reading the reports um, around there I, I, I think there were uh, there were several reports supplemental reports filed but in, the, the result at this point is the case is still open um, for a misdemeanor harassment um, type of investigation. Um, I, I believe I did share video of that incident with the police. Well, I think that the report I'm, and I just have the initial report. There's no mention of um, video. The, the first call, there is a report mention of the officer asking about footage, security footage. Um, and you had said that the video was not accessible because it downloads a day later. Um, you agreed to provide the officer with the footage on August 2nd. And then on August 2nd, uh, advised the officer via a message that your attorney advised you not to show the video that you had. Um, which again is, is certainly your prerogative. So um, again, just you know, going back to the video system, um, you know, there's a time where not many businesses had those except banks. Um, but now due to technology and <clears throat> really affordability, um, the average home video system is uh, 50 times better than banks were using just five, five, 10 years ago. So uh, I would encourage you to take a look at those systems. Um, so the last part of this report, and again, I think um, when we talked in June, um, when I take a look at our CAD system, which is our, uh, the CAD system records all incoming calls. And if an officer dispatched, what's the nature of the call? It's categorized. And obviously there's a date and time. And then who, who's responding to that call um, who's calling in the, who's the reporting party on that call. Uh, sometimes those are refused. Um, sometimes that person uh, will, will leave a number, but say, I, I, I don't want to be involved. Sometimes they'll refuse all information. Um, so things that aren't included in, in this kind of a breakdown are the innocuous type of calls that every business experiences. Um, you know, uh, maybe a minor theft, um, a lost wallet, um, a, a criminal mischief. They came in that morning and somebody had spray painted the uh, part of the property or something like that. So really, I, when I look through those, I just look for things uh, such as, you know, you can see in the heading line there, suspicious in progress, narcotics, drug violation, uh, medical calls, mo mostly medical calls because I wanna read enough of the call notes and sometimes I don't have a lot of call notes, but sometimes I'm looking for bits and pieces of information in the call notes that might lead me to believe that uh, over service was involved. Um, I did not get that from any of these medical calls, um, at least from the call notes. Um, so you, you, these are just a breakdown of other calls um, in that time period. I, overall, I, I'm, I believe that things have been tightened up at least since June, at least 
evident as evidenced by the, the call load from what I saw before. Um, so I would encourage you to, um, you can never have, uh, if you have one security person, you need two. I mean, you can never be vigilant enough. And um, again, 90% of the problems at bars and taverns comes from over service. So people that have too much alcohol, and remember, you're probably not the first establishment they visited or they have visited that, that day. So you have to be aware of the status of somebody's um, level of alcohol on board before they're ever served at your establishment. Um, the, it's, it's, when you have people that are ordering at the bar and they're ordering for themselves because there aren't, uh, perhaps it's not set up with servers. And so they might be in the back playing pool and then they walk up and get another drink. Maybe you have servers at times that can take those orders, but your security people, because of uh, that could be variable, they have to be really on the ball. Um, and that's why you need more than one. It, somebody at the door uh, is not a bad idea, but especially to check IDs, um, your establishment um, based on uh, my experience does not get a much of a, of a high volume of a younger college type crowd. So right. you're not likely to have an ID problem. Um, you should still be checking those IDs as, as uh, you need to under age 50, but um, somebody to walk through the establishment and, and kind of keep an eye on people. You know, people that are getting overly boisterous, uh, people that appear to be agitated, a fight brewing, uh, you know, these things all kind of start in a, a subtle way. And then next thing you know, you've got a fight on your hands. Um, bathroom, I think we talked about this before when we did our physical walkthrough. Lighting, okay, bathroom should be well lit. Um, mm -hmm. There should be no chance for um, any kind of illegal activity in there, or at least not conducive to that. Uh, your back patio, Christmas lights uh, don't provide enough lighting uh, for, for a safe environment. Um, so, and, you know, I, I realize that, you know, any, any, any tavern owner can't help. Um, there are times where there's trespasses where somebody comes onto your property and you ask them to leave and they won't leave. So you see that some of those calls, types of calls listed here, um, I would certainly not fault uh, Mr. Wyman for those calls. Obviously somebody called us um, having wanting to have that person removed. Um, I think one of your problem areas for that type of issue is your back patio uh, because it's sort of in what we would probably normally think of as an alleyway um, and you get a lot of traffic through there. So um, I, like I said, overall, I think, I think there's been a an improvement. Um, You know, your, um, you know, you're in the first uh, report mis mentioned, you're entitled to, uh, you know, full due process and that, that, that's being investigated um, properly and uh, everything will, will, will have a, a outcome for that. And, but I would encourage you, it's, it's part of what we talked about last time too, is, um, you know, it's never a good idea for an employee or an owner, certainly, uh, or a bartender to partake of alcohol on their, their premise uh, while, while they're, they're uh, at their working, they're under their shift. Um, it's, um, it, it's a bad practice. Uh, I, I hope that that uh, is not still occurring. Um, and, you know, Conduct otherwise obviously needs to be such that, um, you know, if you're the person in charge, um, you've got to create an environment where um, I know sometimes these things are out of your control. In other words, somebody shows up at the bar that you don't want to be there. Um, you know, call us immediately, do not engage them, okay? Um, and uh, if this is a person that you, continually have issues with doing this, then obviously, you know, talk to the officers when they get there, let them know this is a continual issue. Um, 
and you can certainly get a no trespass order uh, put in place with the, with the department. Right. Uh, do you have any questions for me, Mr. Wyman, about um, data gathered? I, I have one, um, Officer Denning. <clears throat> is it fair to say that there is no report or call indicating intoxication by staff or management in the call log that was provided? I did not find any uh, any such report or um, I'm just reviewing the first um, report listed. I, I, I see some indication that the other involved party was drinking at the bar um, prior to the incident. Um, I don't see any indications from the report that. So no, I don't, I don't, I didn't find any, you know, as far as CAD calls, call notes, things like that. There was a couple of, of CAD call notes that were the party calling the report in was uh, uncooperative and sounded intoxicated. But it, from, the, from the call, it didn't appear that that person were, was actually even on scene, but was calling in something on, you know, at the bar. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't have any other questions for Mr. Denning. Thank you, Officer. Thank you, Officer Denning. Any other questions from the board? You know, Officer Denning covered everything for me, so I'm, I'm fine from now on. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Wyman. Thank you. Continuing on with agenda item number six, show cause hearing concerning an alleged August 5th, 2022 violation and whether the retail liquor store type liquor license held by Punjabi 2 Corporation doing business as Bailey's Wine and Spirits, 4800 Baseline Road, Unit E-101, Boulder, Colorado, 80303, should be suspended or revoked. I will note for the uh, members of the authority, however, that the licensee who received this alleged um, violation in order to show cause is not present at this time. We do have a little bit more information. This violation, alleged violation happened prior to um, the transfer application to a new entity um, being submitted. Um, however, there is in your packet for this item, a signed stipulation between um, the city prosecutor and the um, licensee as the alleged violator. So, um, Council Witt, um, would you like to make any <laughs> inf um, information on this? Yeah, so our prosecutor's on the line. He's, he can join if you want to talk to him about it. But oh. um, so it sounds like there was a, a stipulation that was signed by both parties. Um, so we can either continue the hearing and have him come forward or move forward with the signed stipulation. Don't we need to have them present? I feel like they need to be here. Yeah, it's a little bit of an odd situation because the licensee has been transferred as well. I don't know the whole background of that as well. Um, it sounds like maybe there's some transferring going on too. Uh, Sorry, I can't seem to find it, but did, who who got the violation? Whose name is That would have been under the Punjabi 2 Corporation doing business as, that is the licensee who held the license prior to the transfer. So they should be here. Go ahead, Member Wallace. Matthew, Matthew I, I was going to say that we could accept the stipulation to fact um, um, so that it would be on the record of, of, the, of the address having, having received it this, and that they stipulated to fact. But as far as penalty, I don't think we can go forward. I think you're right, uh, uh, Chairman Califano, we can't go forward unless we had someone here and, and they had the uh, uh, due process to, to address the situation of penalty. I'm not sure what we have, we've had this before where, where we, we were creative and what we did but was, it was with the cooperation of both the previous owner and the existing owner. 
since the previous owner is not here, I, I would like to suggest that we just accept the stipulation to fact so that it would go on record of the license uh, um, at, at this address. And, and we can and, continue and, it too, if you want to. Laura, Laura, what do you, yeah, Laura, what do you think? What, what, should, we, what should we do? We, so we, you can uh, accept the stipulation of facts and then you can continue it if you want to talk about punishment with the individual on the line. I say oh, we do uh, that and continue it to next month just because I'd, I'd like them here. I feel like their their presence and accountability is kind of crucial to our determination of violation. I think you. I, I, I think that it's no longer crucial since they have agreed to the stipulation of fact. The penalty, however, is something we can't really do because they don't have the they don't have the ability to come forward. And I don't want to just keep pushing this thing forward because if if in fact. As I said, and Laurel, correct me if I'm wrong, the only thing you can really do is accept the, the penalty. And if they, and next month they don't show up, then either we still can't do anything. And why would they ever show up? Yeah, and if they don't own the corporation anymore, what what is the, you know? And sorry, I'll just give some context because I am the one that's processing this transfer application. The transfer has not gone through. The okay. owners are operating under a temporary permit. Um, or a temporary license, excuse me, but the transfer, the full transfer has not gone through. Do you know when it will go through? I don't. Um, it's at the state currently for their review, so um, could be any day now or could be a month from now. Officer Denig. I think my question was answered, but I just wanted clarification from, we don't have a representative from the uh, prosecutor's office, but um, that the stipulation was, in fact, that stipulation was received from Punjabi. So the new entities, since the transfer is not in place, they wouldn't have uh, agreed to the stipulation, right? So this is stipulation was from Punjabi? Yes, and it was signed by both parties, both the prosecutor and, okay. um, yeah, and Punjabi. So the, the new licensee that the truck is going to is, is operating right now under a temporary license until the state gets back on whether or not the transfer is going to go through? That's correct. And the way that it will actually work is that the state will send us their approved license back. And then from there, we still have to issue. So we have to go through an inspection um, and then like a check that everything with like sales tax and health department and everything like that is good. So um, it will be a while and there's a couple of steps still between um, now and issuing the license. So what bearing does any stipulation of the fact have on anything if that Punjabi no longer has, is holding the license? And will we, will, will we see the transfer? Transfers are done administratively, right, Caitlin, or this one will be? That's what I'm saying, <laughs> well, based on the fact that there's this Yes. So this is why I was like a bit of a unique um, situation is because transfers are typically done administratively, but they technically, unless there's a show cause or certain parameters, then we do bring them to you, as you know, um, since technically the show cause hadn't been decided, like you aren't deciding the show cause until today. And I took the transfer in September. So they didn't have a show cause <laughs> before today technically so that's why we started processing it administratively but and if i oh go ahead yeah, Caitlin, go, ahead, Kristen, go ahead i was going to add in that um one of the things when there's a transfer in place is the new um incoming licensee agrees um to accept the license with all previous violation histories as their own going back for the five years so that does come into consideration um, should unfortunately something else happen on down the line, because if it's within those five years, it can be, it's considered their own because they're accepting it with that, with those violations, if there are any. So then I have a, a question. Do we, mm -hmm. should we then just have the, the new licensee uh, attend the hearing because <clears throat> the, the punishment would go against their, their license. Like, they're the folks who, who are operating the store. Um, do we need both of them to attend? That's my first question. 
Um, Laurel, can you? <clears throat> so, well, the original person who signed the stipulation of facts was the previous um, individual. So normally we would do it against, you know, the stipulation of facts and who owned it at the time that this occurred. That being said, maybe there's a way that we can move forward with all the parties involved and talk about um, options with both of them. Well, and yeah. the reason I bring, go ahead, Mike. I was going to say the reason I bring that up is because even though the stipulation agreement was signed by the, the previous licensee, um, th they won't have any of the like ill effects of the punishment. Like it's all the new licensee who has to have the the feel the effects of the um, of the punishment that we we deem that they should have. So, so it make would make sense to me to like understand both sides of the situation kind of before even saying like this is what the you know suspension or whatever we should do well um, like one of my yeah. sorry to interrupt you there but i don't think the yeah. new licensee would ever see any of those effects right because what um i believe what kristen was saying is that if something were to happen with the new the person taking over this transfer we would have the things that have happened previously with the old own the old owner holder of the license would have bearing on what we decide that and, well i think and, i I agree with your, this is just what I'm looking at in my mind. Let's say member Wallace has a license. He fails as a show cause. He says, oh, member Absalom, you're a friend of mine. I'll transfer it over to you. And then now that bear, do you understand what I'm saying? The way that this kind of system is what I'm, I think Mike's kind of looking at too, because we can't do anything based on this stipulation to the person who is now going to get this license after the transfer passes. Well, they're already operating it too. So it's a little bit. And yeah. in my okay. opinion, the stipulation de fact is he's agreeing to what was charged as happening. It did happen. So there is no one, there, there's no need to have anyone uh, have a discussion with them about whether it happened or whether how it happened. He's stipulating okay. to the, 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 what it, it, it happened. And that's why I would just like, just get it on the record that in fact it happened. And, 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 and Mike, you, I think your suggestion which has happened before. It, it, sometimes it appears as if it was transferred, ownership was transferred from one person to other just to erase the previous uh, um, um, uh, penalty or uh, uh, show cause or the, the, the sales to minors or whatever it was before. Uh, just and so this is keeping it on the record is it was a way of of seeing that in fact it it did happen at this location and this was the owner at the time. And do they have any ownership in the in the new ownership? So, it, it, so it's just a good record to keep. And and and, and as I said, it already stipulated the fact that as it was purported, it did in fact happen that way. And they agreed to it. Uh, that that would be a good thing to just put on the record. So, so then, to clarify, because there's this transfer is in in process, the the new owner would not have any. The, we can't issue any sort of punishment or anything to the the current store. The current we licensee. do we we do penalties here. We don't do punishment. Sorry, penalties. <laughs> well, the penalty. So under our hearings and things, it says license, not licensee, right? It's tied to the license. Um, so right. it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. If you do, like, attach some sort of penalty to, and it affects this new licensee, it does make sense to invite them because it is kind of a due process question where they can present. Um, and. That's kind of what I was suggesting. If we're going to assess a penalty against the license, then shouldn't the new person also be there? And, I, and I'm suggesting that we cannot assess a penalty in the absence of, of the person who's been charged and agreed to it. Right. Does it? So I, I all I'm suggesting is that we just accept this penalty stipulation to fact. Well, I think, but what didn't Ms. Witt just say you can attach that to the license, not the licensee? That's right. It's the license this so that in fact we can go back and see that this that this license has had one in the past, but not this licensee. So um, yeah. So when when we, when, it, when it's when we assign a penalty, it's to it's to the, the licensee operating that license. So uh, it's not it's not you know you can you can say it's, it's a license for penalty, but no, that it's the licensee who who who, who has to uh, uh, experience the penalty. Sure, and, and what I want to clarify is that we are still able to assess a penalty against the, the licensee or a licensee in the future, um, not just accept the stipulation of facts and say, okay, we, we move on from this. Well, we can't, we can't really do a, a penalty in, in, without the licensee present. So like at the next so, meeting, if they were here, you could do that. Right. Okay. 
so so then can we um either move the the license transfer from being you know administrative to i think it's required like a show cause or do something to prohibit that transfer until um the licensee appears in front of us i don't know i i think that well well the, you'd have to say that because someone would have to say this because it's gone to the state already and the state will come back with the license one thing that we have the the state can issue but and um i'd have to double check statute um and our own BLA rules of procedure again, but I do believe um, that there's some stuff, but I don't know um, as far as, you know, what a stipulation would do would be on the record for the licensee. Um, I'm not quite sure about bringing it before the BLA um, as far as like the transfer hearing. Is that what I'm understanding? Well, I'm not interested in, in holding the, the, the new licensee responsible for what the previous licensee did. I am interested in having the uh, his, what in fact he did do, um, and he agrees that he did do, uh, appear on the license. Right. And that's like, so if, whenever we receive a show cause, notice for show cause from um, the Boulder Police Department, we do our due diligence and we look back for the five years for that license. And if there has been um, any violations within the five years, we provide that information on the show cause. And then that's provided to you and that's on the show cause notice. There was a violation in you know, 2018 or you know, 2021 or whatever. And that helps you guys try and figure out if you move to a penalty um, phase, um, you know, for, per our penalty guidelines, you know, and then weighing your aggravating and mitigating factors and all of those kinds of things. So that's what stays with the license is the enforcement history or is any show cause or enforcement history. Um, but as far as, you know, something that's a past tense, I, I we'd have to look at um, Code. No, and, 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 and in fact, at this point, there would be no enforcement history. There would just be the, the show cause and the, and, 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 the, and the stipulation of the fact, because we don't have the ability to do any enforcement subsequent to that without the licensee being present, one who was charged. I mean, if he, if, what we could have done is we could have find, we could have find him. Uh, and if he does show up, we can still find him. Uh, but there, this doesn't change the fact that he, He's already signed the stipulation of the fact, and there's no reason not to just go ahead and accept that. Sure. And what, I'm ask, what I'm asking is, is there a way we can compel the licensee to show up to a hearing so that we can assess any penalties um, if we choose to assess penalties so that the licensee is not able to, previous licensee isn't able to get off scot-free, basically. That's, that's what I want to avoid, make sure that we don't allow someone who has violated uh, he was stipulated, he was said that they, this violation occurred and that we say, um, hey, we're just going to kind of let you go because you transferred that license. And historically, when when this this occurs and it has occurred, it's not un, 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 that unusual. It's not it's, it's uncommon, but it's not that unusual. It, 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 we have done a uh, um, we have done something and it often was a, a, a couple of more creative, but I know one at least one was a fine a fine. In the world. Um, so uh, we've been talking and it sounds like the temporary license is good through January 5th, 2023. Um, the, it's a little bit, uh, I'd have to look into the statutes and rules or we'd have to look into the statutes and rules um, because there's only certain reasons you can delay a transfer application or there's only certain things you can look at. Um, so we'll have to look at that and see if show causes are one of those things you can look at to, to delay a transfer. But it does sound like there will be a temporary license through at least the next hearing. I'm not, interested in, I'm not interested in penalizing the new guy because the old guy, you know, but, but, they, but, his, but Mike's question about, uh, is there any way of compelling the previous owner to, to appear? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'd have to look into it um, because it's a little bit different here in the sense that, you know, we don't have this license over him or anything. And, and I believe he's not even in the country. So, um, I'll have to look into some other enforcement mechanisms that we can pull as far as assessing fines. 
Well, that's the beauty of Zoom. You can be in another country and still learn. <laughs> that's why we weren't worried about it. But. Yeah. And how are we going to collect the panel? <laughs> and the letter in our, in our packet says, like, you are hereby ordered to be at the municipal building, which to me sounds like you, you need to be here. But I guess my question is, what happens if they don't show up? Is, is there no teeth behind that? Can we, FTA? <laughs> I know, I was thinking that too. Um, I will look into that and see what I can find okay. for Thank penalties. You. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is, is that we want to move forward with accepting the stipulation of facts and then continue this item to next month um, and try to potentially get in touch with the new licensee and let them know it's in your benefit to attend this and see about getting the old licensee to attend as well. Does that sound accurate? I will make a motion to approve the stipulation of the fact this yes. Member Califano will second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member, Member Roberts. Carr, aye. Sorry. Member Roberts, aye. Thank you. Um, and just to clarify, we are bringing, we would like, the Beverage Licensing Authority would like to see both the new licensee and the previous licensee with the alleged violation back in December. Member Califano would say yes to that. I don't know how much, um, as Member Carr was saying, how much um, weight we can actually require them to attend, being that they were not the one that did the violation. But I, I would encourage them, highly encourage them to attend because it does affect their license that they currently have. Yeah, I second that. Thank you for the clarification. Continuing on with our agenda item number seven, public hearing and consideration of an application filed on August 18th, 2022 from Dillon Companies LLC doing business as King Supers 28, 6550 Lookout Road, Boulder, Colorado 80301, Kroger Company as 100% owner and with Stephen J. Dreher as president, Philip B. Nelson as vice president, Thomas J. Sullivan as Vice President, Christine R. Wheatley as Director, Vice President, Secretary, Karen L. Fike as Vice President and Treasurer, Misty S. Murad as Vice President, and with Stacey Thomason as Store Manager, with a business mailing address of Post Office Box 305103, Nashville, Tennessee, 37230, for the renewal of a fermented malt beverage off-premise type liquor license. Mr. Stephen, I believe you are representing this client. I am. Good afternoon. My name is Adam Stapen, S-T-A-P-E-N. I'm an attorney licensed to practice law here in Colorado. Registration number 27506. Also with me on your screen is Nate Judkins, and he's the store manager for King Super Store number 28. Great. Thank you. Um, can we get Nate sworn in? Certainly. Mr. Judkins, would you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? I state your name. I, Nate Judkins. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That the testimony I am about to provide the Beverage Licensing Authority. That the testimony I'm about to provide the Holford License Alcohol Licensing Authority is true and correct. Is true and correct. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you. And uh, Mr. Stapen, since you're representing its counsel, I'd ask if you'd be willing to waive the reading of the procedures into the record. We would, thank you. Thank you. And is there any ex parte um, communication or conflicts of interest from any members on the board? Member Califano, no. Member, Member Absalom, no. no. Member Wallace, no. Member Roberts, no. Great. And is there anyone here that wishes to, in the audience that wishes to speak to this agenda item? Not seeing any, as there's very few people here now. Um, Mr. Stapen, please proceed. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to apologize on behalf of King Supers and Kroger. I think I was in front of you folks a month or two ago on another King Supers late renewal. Um, and as you know, this is two 
but these folks have been in business for quite some time and have not been in front of you on late renewals previously for King Supers of recent memory. I can tell you, Nate Judkins uh, does not have firsthand knowledge of how these get renewed. They get renewed back in Cincinnati, not Cincinnati. Yeah, in Cincinnati, I apologize, at their corporate. And as a result of this, myself and the head honchos that are based in Colorado here reached out to Cincinnati and said, we can't tolerate this any longer. This cannot happen. What happened? What was the delay? We understand it was due on the 10th of July. You folks received it on August 18th, but still before the expiration. But again, we have a pattern and practice of timely complying with your requirements, getting them in prior to the expiration date within the time frame you wanted them. What happened? And I was told specifically that it was a mistake. We're sorry. Um, and that it was maybe oppressive business or something like that, but we have hit them with emails, phone calls, and conference calls where we essentially said this cannot happen again. This is two King Supers in a row, if you would. Um, and I think it got caught up at the same time, this press of business. I understand press of business is not an excuse. We all have it. We all press of family as well. We're people living with family and business at the same time. It's not an excuse. It's just an explanation of what occurred. Um, that's all I can tell you what happened here. We were we specifically told them, do not do this again. Uh, and we've, I've been on conference calls discussing that. Um, and I can tell you that this has been an emphasis of this organization to ensure it complies with your requirements going forward for all of its locations within your jurisdiction. Um, I think we've provided you the proof of training um, I believe the sales tax and occupation tax have been paid. They're recommending approval. Again, I, mean, I apologize. I wish I could tell you more or pin it to something other than it just didn't get done timely. Great. Thank you, Mr. Stapen. Sounds like they may have been a little too busy buying Albertsons. No, I'm kidding. Um, are there any questions from the board? Not seeing any. All right. Member Califano would make a motion to uh, approve the renewal of this liquor license. Member Absalom would second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Renewal granted. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Yeah, and again, we apologize. I can tell you on top, on behalf of the whole organization, this is something they truly don't want to see. And they apologize profusely for taking time out of your docket for that. So sorry. Thank you. Continuing on in our agenda this evening is agenda item number eight, public hearing and consideration of an application filed on September 16th, 2022 from 1468 Pearl Street, LLC, doing business as Postino Wine Cafe, 1468 Pearl Street, number 110, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Upward Project Holdings, LLC, sole member of Postino Holdings, LLC, with Lauren Bailey as managing member, and with 1468 Pearl Street LLC as applicant, with Lauren Bailey as managing member, and with no ownership over 10%, with a business mailing address of, through, sorry, excuse me, 3443 North Central Avenue, Phoenix, Arizona, 85012, for a new beer and wine type liquor license. Thank you. Mr. Stapen, are you representing this client as well? I am. Let me enter my appearance for this client as well. Adam Stapen, attorney here in Colorado, registration number 27506. And is there anyone, I'm assuming your clients uh, will be giving testimony? Yeah, we do have two individuals here. Carol Johnson, as you know, from Liquor Pros, will be testifying as to the petitions that were circulated. We also have Brianna Tanner, who's the general manager, and she's also visually appearing on your screen. She'll testify on behalf of the applicant. Great. Kristen, can we get them sworn in? Certainly. Ms. Tanner, we'll begin with you. Can you please unmute? There you go. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Brianna Tanner. Do swear or affirm. Do swear or affirm. That the testimony I'm about to provide. That the testimony that I'm about to provide. To the Beverage Licensing Authority. To the Beverage Licensing Authority is true and correct. Is true and correct. Thank you. 
Ms. Johnson. Aye. State your name. I, Carol Johnson. Do swear or affirm. Do swear or affirm. That the testimony I am about to provide. The testimony I'm about to provide. To the Beverage Licensing Authority. The Beverage Licensing Authority. Is true and correct. True and correct. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Was there a third? Sorry, I missed that part. Okay, Just great. Thank you. And Mr. Stapen, since you're representing his counsel, I'd ask if you'd be willing to uh, waive the reading of the procedures into the record. We would, thank you. All right, is there any ex parte communication or conflicts of interest from any members on the board? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Wallace, no. Member Carnell. Member Roberts, no. Great, and is there anyone here in the audience that wishes to speak to this agenda item? Not seeing anyone. Uh, Mr. Stapen, please proceed. Thank you. Um, just like to give a little quick opening here. It's good to talk about good business rather than calls for service, show cause, and a late renewal. So I'm glad we're moving into the good part of the agenda. I can also tell you that these folks are very successful operators, very well-mannered operators, and this is not their first location in Colorado. They're based out of Arizona, and wherever they open their locations in Colorado become wildly successful community oriented location. And I think the same is gonna be here at Boulder if you should you folks grant it. Um, so I wanted to get that out there because I do believe that I wouldn't say it. Our first witness I'd like to call is Carol Johnson to speak to you regarding the petitions that were circulated in furtherance of this new beer and wine license. Carol Johnson for Liquor Pros. And Ms. Johnson, you were sworn in. Um, Ms. Teagues, do you need us to speak to the posting? Oh, yes, I apologize. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Johnson, can you swear or affirm that the poster was posted for the required 10 day legal posting requirement? I was not involved in that, quite frankly. Someone oh, liquor pros did not. Okay. So I liquor pros might have posted it. We have more people than than, than myself with liquor pros. So that I can't swear to, but I'm sure it was done if liquor pros was supposed to do it. And then Ms. Teeth, if you'd like to ask Ms. Tanner, she'd answer that question. Certainly. Ms. Tanner, can you speak as to the same? Uh, yes, I, and I apologize. Um, I am uh, representing my area director today, um, but I was a part of our Douglas County Liquor Hearing, so as familiar as I should be with these things. But um, yes, I did confirm that uh, it was posted um, in the time frame that it should have been posted. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I apologize, yes. uh, Chair Califano. Uh, Ms. Johnson, you mentioned you are associated with Liquor Pros. I know this authority knows you quite well. Would you briefly give a quick background of who you are and what you do? We provide the service of uh, liquor license petitioning, marijuana petitioning, and also uh, the alcohol service trainings. Um, we are a neutral petitioning company and we do not guarantee results. Were you retained on behalf of the current applicant to circulate petitions and further into this application? Yes, we were. And can you describe to the authority how you circulated, when you circulated, and what the results were? Petition was done on, excuse me, they did it, Wednesday, November 2nd. Um, and we start the closest locations and radiate out. In this case, the businesses were primarily uh, the entire, the, about three fourths of the length of the uh, major uh, Pearl Street area and then there were business residents done in um, about six or seven different locations on uh, north in all four quadrants what results did you obtain uh, we made an attempt at 66 businesses and 268 residents for a total of 334 um, attempts out of that we received 50 signatures in support from businesses and zero in opposition we received 59 signatures in support from uh, residents and zero in opposition. So we had 109 signatures, all of which were in support. Um, there were um, 24 people who declined to participate, 13 were not interested, eight do not sign any petitions or were still concerned about COVID contacts, two were too busy and one had no opinion. There were 12 who were not qualified, five were 
businesses that did not have an owner or manager available, four were non-residents, and three were under 21. So I do believe that um, a lot of people did know Postinos from their other locations, as you mentioned, and um, this was 100% in support. Great, Jim, anything else you'd like to advise the authority? Well, I think people are anxiously awaiting the fulfillment of the liquor license. Thank you. I don't have any further questions for Ms. Johnson. I'll turn to her to the authority. Are there any questions from the board for Ms. Johnson? Member Wallace. Ms. Johnson, when you um, do the surveys and someone gives the age of 21, do you, con do you confirm that? If there's any, um, we've never had a problem with that. We don't ask for IDs. We've never had anybody um, try to get out of it. Most of the people are obviously, you know, will tell us right up front. Uh, we've been doing this for years that way. We've never asked for IDs. When you said that you start for a radius close to the, the licensee and then move out, could you please explain to me why the, while the overwhelming majority of the close residences uh, uh, to this licensee are, are low density and medium density residential, you went right many blocks away to get multiple unit dwellings? I did not do this survey personally. Um, they did do uh, if different areas, and that's what they try to always represent, different areas surrounding it. Um, I can't speak specifically. Um, I was not a part of this exact survey. We have a number of people that do the surveys. This is why we always uh, try to get samplings from different areas. Are you aware that almost 20% of the, the people who signed in, in, in favor uh, were, this is their age is exactly 21? No, we, there's, this is a neighborhood that there are, it's not like the hill, uh, we do not even go to the apartments and things, or the sorority fraternity houses up there. Uh, there is some mixture in uh, the areas, but um, I didn't say I, I was not a part of the survey. Uh, there's, a va there's a vast mixture in this area, and you went specifically, according to this petition you presented, uh, to the multiple unit section. Of the, of the neighborhood and stayed away almost exclusively from the multi, low density and medium density part of the neighborhood. I mean, a block away are homes and you went many blocks away to find these apartments. As I said, I did not do the, the petition myself, so I'm not sure what the situation was. We do try to do samplings in different areas. Um, a lot of this, is, I can see on the map, is single family um, homes, some of which there's there's quite a variety. Um, so you did nothing north of nothing north of uh, uh, Pearl Street. Yes, yes, we did. There's what? Which ones? Um, there's uh, on Mapleton. What's that? There's on, there's there's on Spruce, Mapleton are both north. There's four and Concord. There's four. There's four different se sections that are north of, of Pearl Street. The map, there's four four red areas colored in on your map that are up north of Pearl Street, and there's four below for Pearl Street. I'm, I'm looking at the addresses listed on, on the actual petitions. But the map shows the neighborhoods of it. We I'm just looking always, at the well, I'm just looking at the addresses shown on the petitions. They may not have been home to sign. We can't guarantee, we do not guarantee results of the signatures. Um, we go in different areas. There's there's signatures on Walnut Street. Yeah, I, I got that. Yeah, Walnut um, is, is south of Pearl. I was thinking that was not the case. Member Wallace, if you do look at the map, there are areas in the uh, there yeah. that they surveyed in the Whittier area. West Boulder, uh, Mapleton area. There's four areas. Like I say, we can't. I, we don't no, know I was if just, there's, I just, if there's no one them, home to answer or there are. 21. I, I, I saw the map where they, where they supposedly went there, but then no signatures were provided indicating that in fact they did go there and, and spoke to anyone. And so that's all I wanted to make clear. I, I, that's all I needed to have answered for me. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions for Ms. Johnson? Can I have a follow-up question based on that? Sure. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Johnson, did the applicant tell you how or where to circulate your petitions? 
no, they have no involvement whatsoever in that. Like I say, we normally try to get uh, different areas, north, south, east, and west of it. And we, in this case, we did uh, things in all four quadrants of the petition for the residents. Thank you, that's all I had, thank you. Great, thank you. Doesn't look like there's any other questions for Ms. Johnson from the board. Uh, Mr. Stapin, you may proceed. Thank you. Uh, if you have any further questions, I'll ask that Ms. Johnson be excused. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Tanner, can you hear me okay? I sure can, Adam. Great. So you were sworn in? Yep. Would you please state spell your name for the record? Uh, yeah, Brianna Tanner, uh, B-R-I-A-N-N-A. T-A-N-N-E-R. What is your current occupation, Ms. Tanner? Uh, I'm a general manager for Upward Projects, hosting a wine cafe specifically. How long have you held that role? Um, I've worked for the company for five years. I've been in a general manager position for three and a half of them. What's your responsibility as a general manager? Um, so as a general manager, I oversee all operations, um, both front and back of the house for the premise that I'm currently on. Uh, so I oversee, um, you know, day-to-day -day operations, training, uh, food safety, alcohol safety, um, uh, AD team members, um, accountability, reward, recognition, all the things. So. Great, and we're, what location do you currently manage? Uh, currently, right now, I'm at our Highlands Ranch location, which just opened up in August. And are you also responsible for assisting in the opening of the Postino here on Pearl Street in Boulder? That's correct. I will be involved. You are intimately involved? Yep, yep. Okay. I'll be the general manager at that location. So you're, you're gonna be the general manager at the Postino location? I'm sorry, Correct. at the Boulder location. Yes. Okay, uh, we're making a record. Can you tell these folks what exactly is a Postino Cafe? Um, I can. So yeah, I mean, first and foremost, we're a wine cafe. We're, uh, you know, our intention is to, you know, get involved in communities to hopefully make a positive in in impact in that community. Um, we serve, you know, kind of like modern Italian tapas style dishes. Um, centered around, uh, you know, Italian inspired. We serve beer and wine only, no liquor in our establishment. Um, and really first and foremost, we just try to create safe places for people to connect, right? With loved ones or coworkers or, um, you know, all, all of the above. So really we're just a community driven restaurant. Um, and, you know, we are hopefully looking forward to getting involved in the Boulder community um, as, we, as we feel like that would be something that we would be super connected to. How many, how many locations do you folks have around the country, approximately? Yeah, so 21 approximately. We do have four other restaurant concepts that are just in Arizona, um, specifically. Uh, so we are now in four markets, um, Arizona, Colorado, Texas. Uh, we just opened up a location in Georgia, and we've got one opening up in Irvine, California next month. Um, so soon to be five markets, soon to be 22 uh, locations by the end of the year. How many Postinos are located in Colorado? Currently, right now, we've got four locations, three in and around the Den Denver area. Um, our Highlands Ranch location is our first location outside of Denver County. And have you suffered any violations since beginning your operations here in Colorado? Um, we did have license? a license. I should say the, the liquor license. Yeah, so... Um, you know, and I apologize, I'm just speaking on behalf of uh, what I understand, because um, I was not with this location at this time, but we had a violation, I want to say almost six years ago at our Lohi location, um, in regards to us not carting. Um, since then, uh, we not only, you know, parted ways with that particular employee, um, to just create some accountability and uh, around the importance of, um, you know, safety. Uh, but since then, and over the years, we've uh, created a lot of programs or have been a part of a lot of programs to um, really ensure our team that that liquor safety is of top priority. Uh, so we're a part of the BARS program, um, which is something you guys heard a little bit about earlier, but 
Uh, we bring in the bars program once a month to do audits um, for all of our servers and bartenders. Uh, and we are provided either a red or a green card. Um, here at this location, Postino Highlands Branch, we've received two green cards since we've opened. Um, but, but yes, we did have a violation about six years ago at, at our low high location, which was at the time our only location in Denver. And that was a sell to a minor through a compliance check operation. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. I apologize. Yes, that's correct. No, it's okay. I'm just trying to throw the record here. And as we're six, <laughs> I then, appreciate it. So since then, you've opened up several other locations, including the location you're at now in Douglas County, mm -hmm. have not had any other liquor violations of any kind. Oh, we have not, no. And let's talk about this Boulder location. What drew you folks mm -hmm. with knowledge of it to decide to open a location in Boulder? Yeah, you know, um, I think first and foremost, uh, that community, you know, the community of Boulder is just something we really want to be a part of. Um, again, we try to be, we try to be super intentional about the communities that, that we want to be a part of, right? And like, how do we make a positive impact on, you know, businesses and residences, um, you know, and create a space where people feel welcomed and comfortable. And um, Boulder really stands out as like a community that we fit, we feel like we would fit in really well. Um, you know, one of our core values for a really long time was inspired spaces, right? So how do we kind of go into um, some of these spaces in a community that's been around for so long and try to make a positive impact and not only through like food, wine and beer, right? But through like hospitality and guest connection and creating a safe like working environment for our team members and stuff like that. So um, Boulder is just a place that really caught our eye and, um, you know, just the community out there. And we have several team members that work for us in Denver or in Highlands Ranch who have not only like attended college there or who have had children who have attended college there um, who are who have been born and raised in the Boulder community, um, who commute from the Boulder community to work for us in Denver. Uh, so, you know, we just, we feel really strongly about um, being a part of that place. And you've heard just by sitting here today, how important compliance is for the city of Boulder and the beverage licensing authority. We heard from the police department regarding cost for service, we heard about orders to show cause regarding sales to minors. What do you folks, can you briefly tell these folks how you train your staff to ensure that doesn't happen? Yeah, of course. Um, well, I already told you a little bit about our bars program um, that we are a part of. So that's monthly, um, you know, monthly compliance audits that we are ensuring uh, proper like carding is taking place um, within our staff. But, you know, just so you guys are aware, when we open these stores and even even if there's managers and team members that are going into existing stores, um, we have extensive training. So when we go to open Boulder, hopefully we'll have seven days of extensive training and every single day we hit on alcohol safety, right? And that's, that's how to understand, you know, visual cues and speech cues, right? How to, how to read a, a proper ID, what's in compliance with understanding what a proper ID is. And then aside from that, we actually require all of our team members um, from the host stand all the way to our bar staff to be in tips compliance, meaning every single one of our employees uh, that is around alcohol will uh, go through their TIP training program. And is it is this a- I, I'm sorry, you gotta give me a second. I, I, know you, I know you're busy, you're at the store now, I know you're juggling quite a bit. Um, is the training a one-time training or do you folks have continuous training that goes on after the folks are onboarded? If you do, can you describe the authority of what you do? Um, of course, yeah. So BARS program, um, we also utilize a, a a secret shopper program, which is basically, um, you know, someone that we have come in to secret shop our servers and our bartenders, including our management team, hosts and server assistants and our culinary teams as well. Um, but a part of our, our secret shopper audit audits, which we receive monthly, um, will also touch on uh, carding compliance, right? So they're ensuring that one, they've been carded uh, and Two, that their their ID is in compliance with the state of Colorado and that we recognize that or did not recognize that. Um, so we are rated uh, through our secret chopper programs as well. Um, we also do daily lineups uh, for our AM crews and our PM crews. Um, and we touch on what the date is for proper uh, age for alcohol consumption. So it's really a part of our, the conversations that we have in our in our restaurants twice a day. 
So in addition to onboarding them and using a third-party bars program, you guys have your own internal audit system that talks about this and your daily meetings where you continually reinforce the importance of complying with your policies and procedures and thus the laws and the safety for the city and the county up there. Um, yeah, we do. So of course, in our training programs that every team member goes through, um, whether you're a, a host, a server assistant, a server or a bartender, um, we'll touch on alcohol safety. Um, uh, of course, our tip certification that we require and then manager audits as well. Um, our leadership teams have a incredibly heavy presence on, um, on the floor, uh, ensuring that servers and bartenders are um, auditing and carding appropriately. We, um, we just card everyone. That's our policy in-house. And this location in Boulder, if this license is granted, is seeking to have alcohol be permitted outside in a designated patio. Is this your first time operating a liquor licensed patio in Colorado? It is not. Every single one of our locations operate with a patio. And can you give these folks some uh, idea of how you guys control the alcohol in the patio to give them a comfort level that alcohol is not going to be taken off or be brought on? Uh, we heard again through the RAR guys with a jug of margaritas. Again, this was in Fort Collins. Mm -hmm. But what are, what are you going to do or how do you train your staff to prevent that stuff from happening? Yeah, so we have designated entrances for the patio. Um, and not only that, we have railings, right? So like the only way to get in and out of our patio is through, you know, a, a one exit that we have either that leads to like the sidewalk or that leads inside the restaurant. Um, so that is how we monitor, uh, you know, alcohol safety on the patio is there's really only one way in and one way out for people or outside, there's only one way in and one way out um, for them to be going. You know, and again, just the presence from leadership on the floor that we have um, continuously and the training that we have with our teams, they know um, they know that alcohol, where it's allowed and where it's permitted on the patio. And so will you have staff members frequently checking on the patio and or having eyes on the patio at most all times during the time that you're open and selling alcohol? A hundred percent. We have designated staff for the patio. Okay, so this isn't something where someone can walk out there and they're kind of be neglected or ignored. This is part of a location where a server is going to be designated to make sure the individuals are properly served with hospitality, but also ensure compliance. Correct. Okay. Um, when do you folks have planned on opening this location? Should this license be granted? Uh, should this license be granted? The goal is February, February 2023. Okay. And do you have anything else you'd like to advise the authority? I mean, I, I think you've gotten into great detail and knowledge and you folks take this very seriously and this is not a fly-by-night operation, but anything else you want to tell these folks because they are going to be your neighbors to this license be granted? Um, I don't think so, other than, you know, um, hopefully we're able to be a part of the Boulder community and hopefully someday get to serve um, you members on this board and um, you know, we, we take, uh, alcohol training incredibly seriously. You know, I'm involved in a lot of general manager, executive, uh, chef meetings that involve a lot of our, uh, senior level leadership teams and alcohol safety is something that we talk, we talk about frequently. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, we just would look forward to the opportunity to be a part of, um, that community. So I appreciate you guys taking the time and, um, listening to us. Thank you. I don't have any further questions of Ms. Tanner. I suspect the board may have questions. If not, we can move on. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? I just have a couple things I wanted to say. Um, I really appreciated your alcohol policy and safety um, in your uh, uh, employee guide. Uh, that seemed to be really thorough. It addressed a lot of issues. Thought you had to deal with a lot of issues. So thank you for that. I thought that was very thorough and detailed. Um, in addition, are you were you able to hear um, Mr. Nathan Dewey's um, comments when he presented earlier about RAR here in Boulder? Um, was that, and I apologize if you could just remind me, was that the, the, the red card and the green card? Yeah, yeah. So it's a yeah. local organization that um, many licensee uh, holders are a part of. Um, should mm -hmm. you get a violation, it is considered a mitigating factor. And they mm -hmm. also pro can provide you with a lot of useful information um, 
with regards to any issues that are coming up in the city. They, I believe they meet bi-monthly. So um, yeah, I would just highly suggest getting in touch with them and joining that organization. Uh, Member Wallace? I have a question for you. Uh, it, I've been to the Il Pacino in, in Scottsdale several times. Um, and and, 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 and um, I don't understand, why is it a beer and wine license at this location? The other one I was at, there was a significant amount of non-beer and wine. All of our Pocino Wine Cafe locations only serve beer and wine. Um, I, I don't know if you, and I apologize, I think I heard you say Il Poso, which is not an organization we are affiliated with. Okay. Maybe, maybe, um, I've, mistaken, maybe I've mistaken. It was in Scottsdale. Yeah, but we do have two locations in Scottsdale. Um, but Pocino Wine Cafe, both are, um, both of our Scottsdale locations do not serve liquor. We do have another like restaurant concept, Windsor, which we only have one location located in, in Central Phoenix that does serve liquor. But um, no, never mind. I think not I, I, any of our. I think I'm confusing events really. Both because it, it, uh, I'm it's in, okay. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Scottsdale uh, quite frequently, and 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 I'm confusing events. So, but any that, another question for you. Um, Well, that was the only 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 question really is is why a beer and wine? I guess that they're all beer and wine. Well, another question for me for, for uh, Mr. Stapen, your uh, this licensee, uh, this applicant um, at their at their low high in Denver, uh, had a um, sale of alcohol, in, in and was that their first and only? Uh, uh, um, yeah. Was there was there any aggravating circumstances? Uh, no, uh, I can tell you because I remember that very vividly. Uh, Brett Carlick, I believe that's his name. Brent Carlick, is that right, Amber? Um, Brent, Brent, Brent Karlicek, so very close. <laughs> yeah, so Brent Karlicek is my contact, and he's one of the lead executives uh, dealing with Postino and Upward Projects, and he lost his head when the violation occurred. Uh, he actually flew back out to Colorado, instituted the training, talked to everybody, and did everything he had to do, and I can tell you, no, it was not. It was just a server that failed to check an ID that she or he, I can't remember who it was, was trained to do. Normal compliance check, not aggravating, but Brett flew out. I actually dealt, talked with Anoop as well, a couple other executives down in, they call it the lab, down there in Phoenix, and they just they just lost their head over that one cell. And no, sir, there was nothing aggravating with it. Okay, then I, I, guess, uh, I guess they don't, don't fool around in Denver because it's 12, 12 days suspension. No, it's, it's Denver, I believe, follows the 14 day suspension, first violation, several, several days held in advance, and several days pay and a fine. But you're right. Um, I think it was a payment of a fine, how it was resolved. But Denver does have a higher level of days of suspension should you violate uh, a cell to a minor or something like that. Thanks. Uh, that was all I had, Matthew. Great. Any other questions from any other board members? Not seeing any. Um, yeah, Mr. Sapin, did you have any closing statements before we close for deliberation? No other than, you know, I think I told you guys at the beginning, these folks know what they're doing. I think you can tell by hearing from this chatter, this is a well, well-run organization. And all I could say is, not only for myself that have been there and folks from my law firm and other folks that I know that go and frequent these locations, when you do, if you do, you'll see that this is confirmed in practice, not in preach as well. So. That's all I had. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. So we will close for deliberation. Are there any motions or comments? Personally, I think it looks like a great application and is very well put together. I, I have a comment. Um, I personally don't have an issue with, with the, this licensee. However, I don't think the result of the, the uh, evidence they've given for the needs and desires of, of the neighborhood uh, are significant enough for me to accept them as, as what is statutorily required and given the uh, uh, observations I made before. And so I, 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 I won't be voting in favor of this license as a result of that. As I said, 20% of them identified themselves as, as 21 years old. They folk, and, and while I saw the map where they said they had surveyed other parts, but not a single person in any of those other parts signed the petition. And I don't, I, this is, Carol does a better job than this. And I, and I don't know why this, this one came, maybe they didn't contract for enough signatures or, or what, but I don't, I don't believe the, the, 
the statutorial requirement for the needs and desires of neighborhoods been met. That's all I got. And my only comment to that is we have to take this employee at their word and their credit. And um, they said that they went to those neighborhoods. I do understand and think that it is odd that they did not get any signatures from those uh, specific neighbors or neighborhoods, excuse me. However, um, they don't record. Uh, they just record the number of no answers. They don't record which locations answered. So I think in my mind, I'm, I'm taking them at word as a professional business. This is personally me. I hear what you're saying. It's just my, it doesn't mitigate what I said. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, no, I would just echo what Member Califano said. Um, really put nicely put together um, alcohol policy. Um, and I, I know that they they're very um, they're, they're very put together in some other establishments I've seen in terms of how they operate with their um, liquor service. So I would uh, make a motion to approve the license. Member Carl, uh, second that motion. Great. All in favor, say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, Carr. nay. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. License has been approved. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, happy holidays, too. Everyone enjoy their Thanksgiving. Moving on in our agenda is agenda item number nine, matters from the assistant city attorney. Thank you so much. I don't have anything this afternoon. On to item number 10, matters from the licensing clerk. Beverage licensing authority consideration of permanent modification applications by administrative action. Licensing manager Changaris, would you like to begin? Thanks, Kristen. So we've got a couple of um, unique circumstances that we'd like to present to the authority today. Um, I'll talk specifically about the application for Junkyard Social Club, and then Kristen Teague um, can fill you in about the application for Gaku Ramen. Um, so for Junkyard Social Club, this license was originally approved by the board last year, and the business has been under construction since then. Um, throughout the construction process, the city building department has asked them to make some adjustments to their building plans, um, which includes moving some walls and making some changes to the bar. And since this license has already been issued, these changes are considered material changes under the Colorado liquor rules. And the licensee was required to submit a modification of premises application, which has been included in your uh, packet for the meeting today. So typically our process for modification of premises applications is to schedule the application for a public hearing and neighborhood petitioning. But given the fact that this licensee recently completed a public hearing and petitioning for their new license application, and the fact that they haven't been operating yet, staff would like to ask the board to consider waiving the public hearing and petitioning requirements for this application and allow us to process it administratively. So if the board does agree, then we would skip their neighborhood boundary setting in the next agenda item. And if the board declines, then we would proceed with setting the boundaries in the next agenda item and schedule them for a um, public hearing as we normally do. Um, so we've just asked the liquor board for the BLA for um, an exception in this case. Member Califano's for it. I don't know how everyone else feels. I agree I with lost. the proximity. Yeah, the proximity to when we just had this happen. Um, yeah, I am in agreement with you, Member Califano. I, I, I thought they were quite thorough when they were with us. So I, I don't have any other issues that they, I could bring up at another hearing. I'm for it. Great. Thank you very much. And I'll let um, Kristen T talk about um, Gaku Ramen as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the Gaku ramen that you see on the agenda um, for the same consideration, although a slightly bit of different circumstances, uh, Gaku ramen moved, uh, this is for a new application. 
um, and they had moved into um, the old Tahona location. You had previously set boundaries um, and they'd done that and you had previously approved their license and it went down to the state, we received it back. And upon um, working the inspection, uh, I noticed that the um, layout of the premises did not match the diagram. Um, that had been approved at both um, the beverage licensing authority level and at the state level. Uh, so I, we did a lot of research and went back through all the old Tahona files. We could not find where a um, permanent modification had happened with the Tahona license ever. Um, and what diagram that Gaku Raman originally submitted was just the layout that they had received from the landlord, which was the original Tahona diagram. The only thing that Gaku Raman did was come in and clean and do painting. Um, they did not make any modifications on their own. So we are in turn asking that the permanent modification that they submitted that's included in your packet now, which just includes a little bit of um, some walls and different things, um, a server station and things like that, um, also be allowed to um, proceed um, with us doing that administratively. So Tahona would have been operating under not what we had on file for their layout. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, but they had been closed for quite some time before Gaku came in. Right. I'm just interested in how we yeah. didn't catch that with Tahona, but I guess how would you? So yeah, um, I'm for moving it forward administratively. I don't have an I agree. Issue. I don't have an issue. Great, so we have a consensus to approve, uh, let staff approve both of those uh, administratively. Moving on is neighborhood boundary settings for applications for the December 21st, 2022 Beverage Licensing Authority hearing. First one of those is for SB Wines LLC doing business as Persona Wine at 2299 Pearl Street, number six, Boulder, Colorado, 80. 302 for a new retail store type liquor license. The closest location to this that we could find it, um, would be Daedalus at 1825 Pearl Street, Suite B. However, that's not a retail, uh, that, I'm sorry, that is a retail liquor store. What, what were those boundaries? Um, unfortunately, that was done during pandemic. So we did not set street boundaries at the time. We were provided with just a one mile radius map electronically. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion then that, that uh, um, the east boundary be uh, 30th Street, the west boundary be uh, 9th, the north boundary be High Street extended, and the south boundary be Marine. I'll second that motion. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Thank you. And can I get, please, again, who seconded that? Carvana. Thank you. Continuing on to our second one would be Creature Comforts, LLC, doing business as Creature Comforts at 1647 Pearl Street. Unit 2, Boulder, Colorado, 80302 for a new beer and wine type liquor license. The closest, closest for this would be split, kind of 50-50 in between, um, Sweet Green at 1601 Pearl Street and Laughing Goat Coffee House at 1709 Pearl Street. Sweet Green, unfortunately, had the same pandemic issue with just the radius, and I could not locate uh, Laughing Goat's previous uh, boundaries. I'll just make a motion then that, that we use, um, I'll, I'll just going to move the east boundary and the west boundary since the north and south boundary. Is the, so High Street extended on the north, Marine Street on the south, um, 28th Street on the east, and uh, 4th Street on the west. I'm sorry, do you mind repeating that one more time, just a little? High, Street, uh, High Street on the north, uh, Marine you. Street on the south, uh, 28th Street on the east, and 4th Street on the west. My motion. Thank you. Member Absalom will second that motion. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Carr, aye. 
Member Roberts, aye. Right. Thank you so much. The other two that we show on the agenda were previously approved um, to let the staff do administratively. So we'll be continuing on. Uh, the expected administrative processing processing of a liquor license transfer application um, for November um, is uh, Norgaling LLC doing business as Taj Indian Cuisine uh, for the transfer of a hotel restaurant type liquor license. They do have a current temporary and they're doing, um, it is down at the state for review. There were no breweries, wineries, and distillery requests for local licensing authority input uh, for Colorado Liquor Sales Room in the month of November. You were provided with the list of special event liquor permits uh, from the time of the last month's BLA hearing to the formulation of the agenda in the packet. And we'll continue on with agenda item number 10 for matters from the licensing clerk. You were provided with liquor license renewals list. Those were sent um, the end of the month prior uh, and those will be uh, for licenses expiring in February, 2023. We now need to establish a quorum for the December 2020, I'm sorry, December 21st, 2022 hearing date. Um, Is there any anticipated conflicts for a quorum for that date? I scheduled to come back from the Dolomites just for that. Member Absalom will be here for that. Member Califano will be present too, unless I get hit by a bus or something. Don't even say that, Matt. Don't put that on the air. Member Carp, let's back on wood. No. I member Roberts plans on being here. Great. We will proceed with the December 21st, 2022 BLA hearing date as previously scheduled. I will now turn this over to um, staff for discussion of virtual versus in-person hearings. Mm -hmm. Council Witt, would you like to begin at all? I'm, I'm happy to, um, unless Kristen would like to jump in and, and jump in, but I'm happy to just jump in and talk about this a little bit. We brought this up last meeting, but of course not everybody was here, so we pushed it to this meeting to discuss um, virtual versus in-person hearings. Um, the city has uh, repealed the emergency order, so we do have the opportunity to do virtual, uh, quasi-virtual, you know, like hybrid or in-person hearings. Um, I will say that um, we've been instructed by our city due to the technology constraints that even if it's in person, it's not um, an option for the public to join because the meeting spaces that we do have available are too small. So it would just be in person for the authority hearings for now. Um, I think they're still working, I could correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, Kristen or Kristen, but it sounds like they're still working on some of the technology and hopefully we'll be able to um, have in-person hearings with the public if that's the direction we wanna go in the future, um, we can come back to that if that's a thing that we would like to discuss later. Um, but for right now, if we do in person, it would just be staff and the BLA authority and members. Um, since I know that was something that was discussed a little bit last month, um, I just wanted to highlight that for you. That's just the way our technology is working right now with the city. Um, so it's up to you if you want to do virtual, in person, or a hybrid combination. Um, I believe the staff, the licensing department staff, have been trained on, on hybrid, um, so that is an option for us. Is there anything that I missed? Nope, good. Okay, so um, it's up to you whether you wanna continue virtual, et cetera. So we wanted to give that opportunity for you all to discuss. In so the applicants wouldn't be able to come in person? No. Yeah, no. what's the reasoning behind that? Cause wouldn't they just be there and they're recorded? Right. So part of the problem, and I uh, as staff attended the training um, for the use of the new technology that is in place for this, um, we would not be able to use council chambers. But if we did it somewhere else, we could do it. Yes, so more than likely, um, if it were to be moved, um, you know, hybrid in-person um but why can't we use council chambers because the technology um that's needed for this is not yet in chambers you mean if we did a hybrid yes 
because the technology did not do a non-hybrid is there um so the the technology for non-hybrid yes already exists like it used to pre-pandemic the problem is is there is the ordinance that is still in place that prohibits public attendance at really? boards and commissions really yes that's still in place temporarily i, yeah, I don't know and that not be. forever I got to tell you, the people, for the, those of us who've been operating in the world uh, uh, during the pandemic throughout, uh, without the without the luxury of having to be able to hide behind a, 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 a not hide behind, but use use a camera or something, it's, it's a little off putting that people who who been able to do that are, are hesitant to then come back into the public realm. But anyway, that's just my own tick. I've got plenty, plenty of them too. So. Right. So right now there's only three spaces in the city that are eligible that have this um, hybrid technology available to us. Um, one of those, um, some of you have already done, and that would be the uh, Brenton conference room first floor. Um, but being as how there would be no public engagement like we had to prior, we would be able to completely close off that one glass wall because it would just be um, authority staff. Um, of the staff and then members of the authority, um, there wouldn't be any public and then everything would be up on uh, a really large screen that we have in there for those of you that recall. Um, the other two spaces within the city are um, a little bit smaller and not able to be configured as well. My vote would be, and this is just me, but um, we remain hybrid until that ordinance is lifted and then go back to in-person once that ordinance is lifted. Did you mean not hybrid? You meant to keep it this way? Virtual. I'm sorry. Yes, virtual. Okay. Virtual. I, I I agree, and I agree with Member Wallace. I think that I'm ready to be back in person with people, um, because I've been in person running restaurants the entire pandemic. Um, but yeah, I agree. Until we can go to the full format where we're all and we can see applicants coming up in person, what's the difference if the five, the ten of us are in a room? And then people are coming up on video. It, it, that doesn't make much sense to me, personally. But I'm ready to or, for the ordinance to be lifted and see you all in person. And hopefully, it will be soon. I, I think the technology—they're just trying to figure it out. As you said, it's a it's it's a bit off putting, but uh, I I would just as soon go together. But I I'll do what the majority wants, to be, without my opinion, because it's it's a. Uh, uh, um, I, I I agree that I'm a little ornery about the situation. <laughs> and so once the public is allowed back in, um, we will discuss if we're going to be hybrid or what was the, how did we, or is that, we'll just do that once the ordinance is lifted. I think what we were saying is that um, we kind of want all or nothing and not the hybrid mix. So I think that we want these applicants or show causes to actually be physically present with us. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I interpreted, at least as we, we kind of want it to be back to the way we were doing it before the pandemic. So either virtual or in person completely is I think what we're saying. Then we'll cross the other bridge when we get to it. That's what I was wondering, are we just gonna Put this discussion down until the ordinance is lifted and that's even a possibility or are we just are we talking about that now i think we're just talking about what we're going to do now and right now it sounds like the consensus is that we'll just stay with the way we are until the ordinance is lifted and then we'll discuss what we're going to do that's what i was starting to understand okay cool works for me yeah, if that was is that just a, 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 this consensus of us or what, what did you what did you need yeah i just um yeah a consensus is fine um did we hear from everyone as to their comments i believe so so virtual for now and then we'll discuss from what i understand and then we'll discuss okay. once once we're allowed to bring the public in right great and then um, licensing manager Chang Garris for the next item, beverage licensing authority retreat scheduling. All right, thanks, Kristen. So now that we have all board members present, would you like to discuss um, having a retreat and possible dates for that? Uh, 
How soon can we meet? But when when is the St. Regis announcement available? Um, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> we uh, there are some public notice requirements that we have to meet, so we would need to publish um, a public notice in the newspaper, and that typically takes about two weeks. It's, it gets posted on Sundays, um, so I would say a minimum of two weeks. I mean, I would... around the ho holidays. Excuse me, sorry to interrupt, um, but I say around the holidays. If we have to give it two weeks, I would maybe suggest to set something in January when things kind of calm down as people are traveling. And um, so if we could put something on the books in January, it'd give licensing ample time to get the two week notice out. So maybe this group can come together with a January date that would work. Is my suggestion. I, I, I agree with January. I, I would, also agree with January. Uh, yeah, the first two to three weeks of January prior to the university opening back up would be ideal. Um, Wednesdays work well for me, so. Is this an all day yeah. or half day retreat? That's one question. Yes, one question. It's up to the board. We typically do half days, about four hours, but it's completely up to the board if you wanted to do a full day or, or how much time you'd like to schedule. I would vote for half day. Do you and hear me? What my question was, what what time typically is it like, can we start later in the afternoon or go into the evening or does it have to be like eight to five? It can be whatever works best for the board. I think we've done noon to five or, or we, we can do whatever we want to do, but the the, uh, the only stipulation is that it has to be, it has to be public notice. And, and um, but the, in the past, it had a lot to do with what um, the clerk wanted us to go over. So that how large of an and it is and how long it takes. So I guess we would need some feedback on that. Sure, that's a good point. So um, now that we know that you do want to proceed with an agenda or with a retreat and the timeline for that, staff can put together um, a proposed agenda and present that to you um, in the December meeting, if that works, and um, collect feedback on that. If there are specific topics that you would like to discuss at the retreat, um, please let us know. You can. Um, let us know right now in our meeting today, or you can email us separately um, as you think of things, and we can add them to the list for discussion. Kristen, do you have anything to add to that? No, um, that's usually what we've done. And when you're, um, and just a reminder to um, all authority members, if you are emailing suggestions for uh, discussion items, please make sure you email them only to staff and do not include all other members um, on those. Um, Kristen, could you um, explain why we're not supposed to email other members and combine them, CC them? I can explain it. Like. Actually, Laurel is our expert, but I mean, I could, yeah. but Laurel's our expert. So um, under the open meetings law, email is considered a meeting. So if you email everybody together, it's like two, if it's more than two members together in an email, and you start communicating, that's a meeting that hasn't been publicly noticed. So it violates the Colorado Open Meetings Law. Um, so it's a little bit strange because it includes email, but the idea here is that any sort of communication with all of you guys um, that isn't open to the public could be considered a meeting. Um, and so if, if something happens, they can, they can subpoena all of our records rather than just our communications directly with the, back to the office. If we all were to go to a happy hour together, we could do that. We just can't talk about anything liquor board related. Correct. Hey, you guys know this. Yeah. So um, under open meetings law, it's anytime you talk about business. Unless we told everybody two weeks ahead of time that we were going to, we were going to have, go to the bar. Yeah. And you open it to the public. You can. Yeah. Uh, then we have to do an, an agenda and we have to pay to publish it. And yeah. And it would be funny to say the next meeting is held at a bar. <laughs> not, not really. We're an alcohol business. <laughs> yeah, but that's why it has to do with yeah, open meetings. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Off to your day. <laughs> day. <laughs> I think he's for meeting in a bar. Could I, could I make a request um, that the retreat be in person? not virtual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that what yeah. we're talking about? Could we do that? Because technically they are mm -hmm. public. So the public couldn't attend, but they're a public hearing. So we'd have to do a hybrid format or something. We yeah, can do we that. could accommodate that. 
we meet at a bar for our uh, retreat. We could do it at the Breton office building, right? It's flooded. I didn't do that. <laughs> Hopefully it will not be flooded by then. Um, please let it not be flooded by then. Um, so yeah, we can um, put together some dates that are on Wednesdays um, and some times. Um, and and then send those out. I don't know. We can probably put together a doodle poll or something like that. The uh, East Boulder Rec also has been used in the past for uh, certain city meetings. They have a couple of rooms out there. I know. Um, there's a few others around the city. Isn't there one in the uh, atrium as well? There is, but I don't know if it would be big enough for staff and all everybody that is involved in, in a BLA retreat. I think we've had actual hearings in that room before. So I think it, it Oh, we used to, yep, you're right. We just had the cannabis board retreat at the fire training center too, and that worked really well. So I think we've got some few options for mm -hmm. an in-person retreat. Oh, the fire training place sounds like fun. Yeah, it's kind of cool. You get to see a lot of um, burned things. Um, so I'm hearing Wednesdays work well. Does that work well for everyone? Should we narrow it down to Wednesday? Um, is there a preference morning, midday, evening? So I, I still work full time and it's difficult for me to get um, off during the day. So 3 p.m. would be the earliest I could do during a business day. I would prefer 4 p.m. or later. I would agree with Mike on this too. I still work full time. And I, if we're going to do it in the evening, is better for me. Pizza. Or if we need to, I, I'm open to meeting on a Saturday morning or something of that nature as well. I have no problem with that. It's definitely not doing it on the weekend, Mike. <laughs> okay. So if we look at um, the Wednesdays in January, beginning at 4 p.m., obviously we're not going to schedule it um, during. The third Wednesday, because we have our BLA hearing, is the board comfortable with meeting two Wednesdays in a row? Or do you want to have like a week in between? I'm fine with it. Same. Yeah, I think the, 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 the 11th looks good. Would the 11th on um, January 11th at 4 p.m. work for um, all of the board members? It's for me. Works for me as well. It, it can work for me. Yep, I can make it work. My husband won't like it, but he'll be okay. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. This has been incredibly helpful. Um, we'll go ahead and move forward with uh, putting together an agenda and circulating that to board members and um, securing a space to have it. But if you could go ahead and just mark your calendars for Wednesday, January 11th at 4 p.m. Um, and more details to come. Thank you. All right. The last item on our agenda is matters from the chair and members of the authority. Uh, Member Califano does not have anything. Does anybody else? All right, great. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. Member Carr will make a motion to adjourn. Member Absalom will second. All in favor say aye. Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member All Robert. aye. Robert's aye. <laughs> Maybe we can go over this at the retreat. I don't seem to be very good at it. <laughs> There's no, no that's all. reason. We won't. <laughs> It'll be so much easier once we're in person. You'll see. I wanted to tell everybody that since we've moved and passed the, the, the adjournment, uh, the reason why I, I voted in opposition for, for the uh, uh, um, thing was that the, I, that was the worst survey I have ever seen. And, it, it, and I don't know, I'm not, I'm not attributing any, any motives to it at all, but uh, I, and there is a statutory requirement that needs and desires, and that was the only thing they presented. Um, and I knew that I had the luxury of being able to vote in opposition because the other four of you were here. <laughs> so thank you I for really, that. 
Well, I really appreciated um, you bringing that up because those are the types of things that I wouldn't have looked into. And so that's that was really great. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thank, thanks for giving me the luxuries of being able to oppose it because you almost last... you almost persuaded me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK, still it would have been three to two. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, we are adjourned as of 522. Thanks. Thank you all. Have a nice holiday, guys. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. See you next month. Bye.